Hi, um, I'm Al, and I have an Aurora Silent Diesel 6800 generator that I really like. It's a good generator. It's a compromise. It's a high-speed generator. You get what you pay for, but I'd say it's a good. It's been a good value for the last like five years or so. It's been giving me a little bit of difficulty starting lately, and typically, yeah, at the critical time. And because it's an early production unit, one of its shortcomings is you can't get to everything you need. So this is a video documentation of my project of making a minor, let's say, a cosmetic modification to the case so I can get to stuff. So I'm going to kind of narrate this, and I'll be in parts as I perform each step. So here we go. There it is in all its glory. There's our silent diesel. And one of the things... Um, What's happening is when she's cranking and gets to top dead center, no matter what, she's stalling. It very well could be the starter, but I don't want it to be the starter because then I have to buy a new one. I've worked on generators before, and one of the first things I've always done when you have a little difficulty starting is you open the compression release. You can't get to the compression release on this one. The compression release is on the top of the engine, and what we have on the top of the engine is a solid plate. Um, in later production models, Aurora, I think, realized the shortcoming there, and they put a hatch here that you could open to get to the top of the block. I'm preparing to cut my own hole. Uh, it's not a warranty issue anymore. So let's look down here. One of the first things I'm doing is I removed the side panel from the right-hand side. It actually comes off very easily. It's just got a few bolts. Take that puppy off get it out of the way. Next thing, take off the air filter and get it out of the way. And now we're going to kind of slide inside here and I'm going to show you what I'm up against. First of all, what I want to get to. See that red handle there? That's the compression release. There's also an oiler thingy I can't see in there that the manual says do this if you're having a difficult time. Well, I can't. But I want to be able to do that to release the compression and get the flywheel turning to help me get it started. So yeah, I can't just whack a hole above it There's for a reason. You probably remember we have a D-ring for lifting it there, a hook, and I need that for moving this thing. So what I'm doing is, if you'll notice, there's a there's channel, the framework of channel welded down here that provide structural support to the whole top so that when you grab that D-ring, it's got the physical support it needs. So there's some more there. So I need to find out where is this soft spot that's really not structural, it's just there. Where's the soft spot so I can cut my hole? So what I did was using my trusty square thing, this bolt, run straight down the middle. That's cool. That gives me one line. I know I have to go off center a certain degree, so I marked one line on the box. That's that first set of channel with a little bit of margin. Then, using the square as a depth gauge, I bumped up against here and I slid the um, ruler part back until it was just beyond there. Flip it up to here, do a tick mark. There's my next line. Now I've, I've got two sides of it. I know this distance because when I went up there, again, I used the ruler and I measure the inside. And now the only one I have left is so I don't bump up against that piece of channel which is part of the plenum for the air filter. I just don't want to cut into that. Once I get that, I will have drawn out the cut area, or I'll call it my safety zone, up here on the top of the generator. And I'm going to use a circle saw. Um, I have some for working on electrical conduit boxes. And I will do the four corners using that hole saw. That will give me nice round edges too that from vibration and the like will mitigate any cracking in this over time. Then I will very carefully 
use a cutoff tool either on a fi fine tool or my um, DeWalt cutoff tool and I will cut and join those circles coming across. Things I have to be careful with on all of this is I got to take out the foam so I don't set it on fire and I have to make sure that I don't penetrate so deep with the drill bit or the like and strike the top of the engine. So really recapping, very carefully drawing stuff out, uh, making it so I can put my hand in there and just when I'm cranking open the cover, I'll put a hinge on it, open the cover, do the compression release, crank it, get a good spin, put the compression release back. Life is good, the generator starts. If this doesn't work, I'll still end up changing the starter, but I'll have a feature that will benefit me of a feature of a later production model that just never got put back into mine. And I'll have another bell and whistle. It'll make it easier to maintain the generator. Um, I do want to say other than that, it's been a very good deal. We've had power outages running six to eight hours and carries really majority of the load of the house very well. It is a high speed generator. It has some distortion issues that my electronics don't like, but <laughs> I got running water, I got lights, uh, I can run the microwave, I got refrigeration. Uh, I really don't have anything to complain about. So, and it's quiet, I will say it's quiet. Um, before I close, I'll just point out one thing here. I did weld up a, uh, an, a good exhaust thimble going through the outside wall and it does jack it with a uh, actually that PV that um, conduit fitting works very well for a slip uh, it's gas tight enough um, because it's a very ventilated garage so I get rid of all my exhaust that way and it has worked out very well all the joints of the wall are very heavily insulated with uh, fiberglass to uh, prevent any fire mitigation and the joint that runs through the wall is welded, so there's no leaks at all in there. It's been a good deal. I also put a maintenance charger on it. Maintenance charger has done a very good job uh, keeping the battery up because when you want to turn it on, you want it to work. I regret being an early production model. This does not have a hot start, and there's really no way to put a block heater in here. Um, I'm kind of used to a preheated engine, but it's air-cooled, so what do you know? But it's going to be a big difference to me when I can put my hand in there and at least get to the compression release. So that's the project, and uh, I'll update later.